All right, so we got a rooftop unit here that we did the PM on recently. And while I was here, it was low on refrigerant. So I came back today to do a leak search to find out where it's leaking at. I was down about 13 pounds, so it's a pretty good sized leak. Basically, I kind of did an ultrasonic. I heard a bunch of noise, but that ended up being the refrigerant equalizing. So started just scanning around. And then eventually I ended up seeing this oil here on the piping. So the oil is pretty much from top to bottom. Definitely something right there on that black mark that I put. I wanted to scan all the other areas to see if it was, you know, because the fan will catch it and it'll pull it all over the place. And then I always kind of scan on the back side of the uh, coil here because it has a tendency to vibration and stuff. It seems they tend to leak in that area a lot of times. From what I can see, it looks to me like basically the oil has just gotten thrown all over the place from the fan motor. Look at that little burger. It's right in the very back here. That is a tiny flipping leak. Let's spray it again, see if we can get it. Hopefully I'm getting this in the viewfinder. I'm gonna go ahead and soak down these other ones here and we'll scan around some more. But you can see it found a tiny leak. I mean, that thing is small. It's barely, barely showing up at all. We're gonna go ahead and scan around a little more. Like I said, this is a fairly decent sized unit. 17 tons, 17 and a half, I should say. Cold's a little bit of refrigerant. This is a three stage unit. Yeah, we hold 35 pounds. It's gonna take a little bit of time to recover this thing. It's got a VFD on it. It's got two TXVs. This is a VAV system, so and it's got a controller all on it. And then uh, basically, so it's kind of a difficult situation when you want to run it because you got to get all the systems open. But what I ended up doing on this one here was actually opening up the fan section here and let the air just blow out um, because they have safety uh, switches on it. So if the uh, static pressure gets too high, it shuts the system down. Uh, otherwise, you blow the ductwork apart. Basically, we're going to recover this with the 3 8 hoses. We'll see how fast we can get this done. What we're going to use today is some of the valve core depressor tools. Basically, what it does is it pushes down on the center there. It's supposed to give me a little better flow on these high flow valves. We're going to see what kind of difference it makes. We're going to do a 3 8 hose off of the discharge line, which technically is going to pull it right off the condenser, hoping to get pure liquid like that so it's got that purged out since this is an empty cylinder we're gonna go ahead and dump as much as we can get out of there because this unit was just running right and directly into the tank and it's already making a difference this is 410a unfortunately so I do got my water hose up here on the roof to help cool my tank down uh, they don't have any ice and I don't feel like running a lot of hose and believe it or not I actually used my little Milwaukee fan there and it helped quite a bit the joys of picking a refrigerant that runs high pressure. So we got 15 pounds, so we're halfway there. Gotta cool it down. That's a subco tool. Normally if you can get the uh, hose up there, you can just put that on the tank and it'll, it'll keep her cool enough. You won't have no issues. We are doing it through the vapor port just because it's got wide open valving straight on down through where you got a dip tube on the liquid so it's a little more restrictive. Another trick I've tried is cramming more air through the machine. And it actually doesn't do too bad of a job. I've tried it both ways. Like I said, I'm pulling straight off of the circuit there. I'm just monitoring it with the gauges just to see where I'm at. We're maintaining about 425 area. So she was tripping about five, five and a quarter. So this actually is working better than uh, cooling a tank. If I had two of these fans, it'd probably be better. But I thought I'd throw a little hint out there. Today's about 80. 80, 82 degrees, something like that. So we're right at 30 pounds. Um, so we might be a pound or two off from the leaking. Let this go a little bit longer and we'll get her done. Then we'll just uh, reheat that and then uh, recharge it. We're gonna probably pump this right back into the uh, system, right from the recovery tank through the recovery machine. Uh, that's one of the fastest transfer methods that I found when you're dealing with bigger equipment. Um, 
there's certain tricks and things that you end up learning when you start getting into bigger things that you wouldn't normally do with tiny little five ton units and stuff like that, which this one's not real big. It's only 17 and a half, like I was saying. But when you get into several hundred ton uh, units and things like that, you've got to uh, speed things up a little bit. And especially when it's super cold out when you're doing it in the middle of winter. What we're gonna do on this is we'll take it down to where it's just a positive pressure. We'll braze that and then we'll just basically recharge it. We're not gonna pull it into a negative or anything like that. We should be able to make the repair and uh, we should be good to go. That way we don't have to change filter dryer and all that. Like I said, it was 30%, uh, 40% down. So we weren't pulling in a negative. We didn't suck any moisture in, anything like that to where you know we really need to justify it. This uh, could be considered half ass by some if you're a stickler on by the book. But one of the things you'll learn is uh, there's always corners that you can uh, roll around. Uh, as long as we keep her in the positive and we just got a slight positive there, we'll be fine. We'll be able to braise it, won't have no issues. Okay, we're gonna warm this up a little bit, burn all that oil off. Get all that oil, because I don't want those contaminants in there. We're gonna do both of these joints right here just because they're both so close to one another. That one looks just like factory. Let it cool for a moment. Come in here on this one. Try and pull that heat into the larger pipe. That way it sucks into it. Kind of hard to get to it, but we will. There we go. Hit that. Let it cool for a moment. And then I'm going to pull that little goober there I got right here that makes you look bad. There you go. Yeah, we all make a few mistakes here and there. Except for the super techs that tell me I suck, but you know, it's okay. And since I disturbed that, I'm going to go ahead and get this over here. Just as precautionary. Bring it in. Just to make sure. Let it cool. And it's coming down to this one here. Burn off any oil. A little bit on it just to help her out. There we go. Bring it around. There we go. There we go. So, both of those have been redone, so if there should not be any leaking on there, if there is, then I screwed up. But for right now, we've got it there. We've got about two pounds, three pounds of pressure in it. It's uh, basically evaporating out. We recovered everything. So basically what we're at right now is the minimus release. If you was to look through the hose, look at the trees over there, see that? That's just a little bit of vapor right there. There's no oxygen getting in there, and that's very, very minuscule. So, I've done this multiple times over the years, and if you like it, great. If you don't like it, it works for me. Um, but, you know, like I've said a million times, I'm doing this to help some people out. Is it the 100% correct way? No, you should pull it out, change the filter dryer, pull a vacuum, and spend another three to four hours. And for as concerned as everyone is on here about how we supposedly do things too correctly to the point where it costs the customer money, I wouldn't think that they'd have anything to complain about. So, like I said, this has been repaired. It should not leak now. All this oil crap down here is all from that little leak up there. These fans basically pull it and just fling it everywhere.
she got everything out of the machine. We'll do that up here on the fitting. That's good to go. Zero this out and we will weigh in the 35 pounds that we need. Now since you're sucking pure, since you're sucking pure liquid in, you gotta kinda throttle it a little bit into the machine, otherwise you're going to uh, overwhelm it. I'd never done this prior to being here where we got, you know, like I said, bigger things to work on. There's, uh, especially when you're dealing with the expensive R22 and you're talking 200, 300 pounds of refrigerant, and uh, as long as your tank's clean and your machine's clean, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. So, as you can see, we've already got nine pounds already in there, and as long as it's taking us to talk. If this was just a little split system, obviously it now would be charged. It just would not be worth it. I was pretty confident in my braze joint, but let's go ahead and do a spray here of it. I do not see anything at all there. And as you can see, it looks not too bad compared to there, to there. No burgers, no funky monkeys. Letting the detector warm up. We'll uh, scan it with that while we're doing our thing. We're already at 19 pounds. So we're able to get this thing back up really quick. We're pumping it all into the condenser. So no problems of liquids wagging back to the compressor or anything like that. Kind of explain what I'm doing. And I'm kind of wondering, are you guys like it when you just watch what they do and don't really explain it? I'm kind of curious of that because their channels have grown quicker than mine. So I just tend to explain why and what I'm doing. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. All right, good. We were about five pounds low yet. And stop, boom. That's it. So she's charged to spec. Yeah, we were here on the first, so it's been 30 days since we've been here. So we lost about five pounds in 30 days. Notice our pressures are nice and smooth. Nothing's going up and down like we got non-condensables or something stupid in it. So put that on the shelf. Well, we know we got it weighed in. Our pressures are not abnormal. We're pretty normal there. So uh, you can't beat the factory weigh-in method. Running a 55 degree evaporator, which like I said, this is a variable air volume system. So we may have zones calling, not calling, motor could be ramped up ramped down all kinds of crap going on it's hard to say exactly what's going on so uh, i just want to make sure we weren't uh, going skyrocketing head pressure or dipping low into the suction pressure which neither one of those are happening so that's going to wrap this one up still got to go check out the other unit yet all right so like i said this is a vav system so i can't force it to run at full capacity without bringing some outside air in and also, and this is all controlled by a uh, building automation system, but this thing's 25 tons. So we are blowing a lot of the air out here. I mean, it's, otherwise we would have blown the ductwork all to heck. So this chart system here is quite amazing. They want to know what your discharge temperature is, which we got 105. So you go 105. 5, 10, 15, 20, so the top line here, go over, and then they look at your discharge, which is 338, 338 somewhere about in there, let's just say 350, and if we was to hit the 105, we're above it, it says add if above the charge. I don't know why they wouldn't just use subcooling, why they think that you're not smart enough to do that, I'm not sure, but I would think if they got you working on this, that you know how to do it. I, I just me this is the lazy man's way of doing it but whatever so in reality yeah it's a little bit low subcooling though comes out to being 14 degrees i haven't even put my suction probe on there yet but i'm gonna let it run for a little bit 410 is 410 and it all takes forever so you can see there's oil down there on the bottom so i don't know since that's a new dryer if that's uh, old oil from before or what exactly? So, 
Worst case scenario, we get it charged correctly, and if it starts to rain, which it looks like it might, then uh, we'll have to come back and finish it up. This one here holds 43 pounds. So we still aren't quite to our target yet. At this point, we're just gonna look for a leak. And right down here on that solder joint, every time. And surprisingly, there's not leaking any on the, on the uh, seal here. Nothing here at all. Microscopic micro bubbles. There they are. Let's go ahead and douse that down again. Yep, there she is. Plain as day. We'll need to come back. We're going to order a new roto lock for that and then new seals for both of them. And uh, that way we can chop it out and just put a new one in there. We'll pull the refrigerant out and we'll weigh in the factory charge. That's going to be the best thing. And I scanned the rest of the system over. Did not find any other leaks anywhere. Checked the evaporator really good. Scanned all up inside of the, uh, the distributor tubes here. And everything was good to go on that. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, by all means, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we will catch you guys on the next one.